Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Best and Slot here with part 10 of the Creation Kit tutorial series. Today we are going to be adding enemies and enemy encounters to the game. Very cool, makes our dungeons far more exciting, obviously no one wants to trek through a dungeon without facing any enemies. So we are back in Naxxus Tomb, as always, file, data, load skyrim.esm and load your dungeon or wherever it is you want this enemy to be. Make sure you set it as the active file, as always. So we've gone ahead and loaded Naxxus Tomb in the render window, and as you can see um, if you watched the last video, I've swapped my table on the left for an alchemy table. So I did search for alchemy in um, all, and swapped in an alchemy table instead, because we want our NPC to interact with that alchemy table. It's very easy to stick enemies in this game, you can just put them down and they'll be there waiting for you. But in this video, we're going to make them a bit more interesting. We're going to give them behaviours and patrols to make it feel like they're actually living in the dungeon as opposed to just sitting there waiting for you to come along and kill them. So, first things first, let's get ourselves an enemy. All enemies are contained within Actor and Actor, so we're going to click on that. And now we're going to search for LVL, which means leveled. So any enemy LVL is on the leveled list. So if you go in at level 5 or level 20, the enemies will be different. It also depends on the encounter zone and various other things, but if you want an enemy to change depending on your level, you want to search for LVL. If you want them to not, if you want them to be a base encounter like a saber cat or like a basic skeleton or something, you search for ENC. So we're going to get a warlock. So we're going to search for LVL warlock and we're going to put this guy in. We're going to put a leveled warlock conjurer. So all we do is drag that in. And there he is, there's our warlock. As you can see, he's a marker at the moment. If you drag him in and you can't see him, make sure you're hitting M to turn. Actually, no, markers. It doesn't seem to be a marker. You should be able to see him no matter what. And you'll have the screen M with a little arrow shape coming out of it. And now, if you go in game, there will be a warlock conjurer based on your level waiting there for you. It's that simple. But that's also a little dull. And, you know, he's not going to stand there waiting for you to come bash his face in. Nobody does that. Okay, some people do that, but only very strange people do that, and our warlock is a smart guy, or girl. So we're going to make them do something, that's why we've got the alchemy table here. So we need to link our warlock to this alchemy table. First thing first, um, make sure you have nav meshed, as I mentioned in the last video, if you haven't, go check out my creation kit tutorial number 9, nav mesh your dungeon, otherwise your NPC simply won't work. We are going to hit Control e bring up our nav mesh, because we want to make sure that the marker for the alchemy table, which is this blue bit here, we want to make sure that that is in the nav mesh, otherwise our NPC won't be able to get there and they'll just stop midway. But it's clearly there, so we're just going to cancel, that's fine. And now we're going to double click on our marker, and we're going to go to linked reference, double click in the references, you'll have this empty box with keyword and reference, you want to double click in that. Then you want to click um, doo -doo -doo, select reference in render window. And then we're going to double click on the marker for the alchemy table. And as you can see in the reference, it says crafting, alchemy, workbench, and then some information. Click OK. And click OK again. Now, at the moment, our NPC will walk up to the alchemy table, use it for a second or two, and pull back and stop. We want them to stay there indefinitely. So we're going to double click on the alchemy table, go to patrol data which as you can see is now ticked because somebody's linked to it and as you can see the idle time is set to 10 but that's because I did that at an earlier point um, if patrol date is not ticked make sure you tick it and then you want to set your idle time to 1 or higher if you set it to 0 they will walk up use it for a split second and then stop if you set it to 1 or anything higher they will use the alchemy table until you disturb them this is because although it's a patrol data there's nothing else in their patrol they've been told to go to the alchemy table and then nowhere else so until we add more points to our patrol, they will just stay there until you get in their way, basically. So that is the basics. If you want an enemy using an alchemy table, it's that simple to do. That in-game would now be a conjurer at an alchemy table. Very cool. However, not that exciting in itself. Maybe we want them to walk around a little bit more. So we're going to make a patrol. We're going to make two types of patrols. The first one is going to be a ping pong control, which means they're going to go from one to the other and then back again the same way in like a like a ping pong ball, basically. So we need something called a patrol marker. Now you find these in the miscellaneous section in idle marker. So we click idle marker. Let's get rid of our filter up there. And the one we're looking for is Patrol Idle Marker. 
Let's get that to the side there. So we're going to find patrol idle marker. You could just search for it and then go to all. But you're looking for patrol idle marker in the miscellaneous and idle marker section. And this means they're basically going to walk to this point and then stay there without moving. As you can see there's several others. Um, if you wanted to have them look through a table or a chest or skeeva sniff, whatever. The, well, I assume that's for skeevers to do with like a sniffing action. You've got all these markers, you can put these down and then your NPC will do that action at, when they reach that point. But for now we're just going to make them nice and idle. I'm going to drag that in. And there's our... so that little mark here, this will denote the direction they face. And as with the alchemy table, uh, like sitting position, if you press M to get rid of the marker, it will vanish. So if you can't see it, make sure you hit M to bring your markers up. Now we need to link the alchemy table to that. So then our NPC will go from here to the alchemy table, back to this, and then they should theoretically just sort of walk between the two. To do that, we're going to double click the alchemy table, go to linked ref, double click, same as last time, same as last time, double click on our marker. As you see, it says patrol idle marker there. Click OK. Click OK. Then we need to double click on our marker, go to patrol data, tick patrol data. That'll take a second. And then set how long you want them to idle at that spot. Say we want them there for three seconds. Click OK. And we're going to change the patrol data on our alchemy table as well. So now, if you go in game, your NPC will start here, although you're probably not going to notice that because the sandwich rule, as it's known by Bethesda, you do not have an NPC in the very first room. Or you never start a dungeon with a, an encounter, simply because if one of your follow, uh, players, basically, if someone playing your dungeon loads up the level, they may have gone to get a drink during the loading screen, something like that, you don't want them to have to fight as soon as they load the dungeon. So make sure they're in the first room and not, like, down here somewhere. Anyway, so now our NPC would walk from this point over here to here, back to the alchemy table and then just sort of loop between the two, spending a few seconds at the alchemy table and a few seconds idling at this point here. However, that's still not the most exciting thing in the world and heck's not going to be in a minute either, but we're going to make this a full loop now, so to do that we're going to hit Control D on our idle marker, bring that up here, and this will keep the same patrol data, so it'll keep the three seconds if we go in there. Yep, as you see it's still three seconds. We're going to click linked ref again, double click, select reference in render window and select the alchemy table. And now we just need to link our other marker, double click, click OK. <clears throat> and now our NPC from this point here will walk to the alchemy table, spend three seconds there doing alchemy stuff. They, they won't just stand at the alchemy table, they will actually lean over and start to um, do alchemy basically they'll look like they're smashing something in a pest mortar and brewing potions and all that kind of stuff this does depend on the NPC the NPC has to have the capability to do that when I was first testing this out I used the Draugr that won't work Draugrs do not have the AI built in and the animations and such things to actually go and pretend they're doing alchemy you have to use a proper NPC like a, a warlock or something as we've used here so the warlock walks up to the alchemy table uses that for three seconds walks down to this marker here, waits there for 3 seconds, walks up to this marker here, waits there for 3 seconds I'm going to move that up a bit and move that to there let's move that a bit further up actually just just trying to make a nice big triangle there so they'll walk to there, walk to there, walk to there and then they should walk back to the, pink, um, the alchemy table that should be now a continuous loop until you get in their way <laughs> Only a couple more things to show you and then we're going to go try this out in game. We are going to, oftentimes you'll see a warlock wandering around with a skeleton, like a, a, a buddy, a skeleton friend with them. So we're going to add one ourselves. We're going to go back to actor and we're going to search for, well any second now, we're going to search for N ENC, which is encounter, which means um, they're a set level. It's usually for weaker enemies, particularly if you put a enchant um, ENC skeleton zero one, melee one handed, that will spawn in any skeleton with a one handed weapon, and they'll be easy. So there's our skeleton. We're going to hit F just to bring him down to the right level. There he is, looking beautiful. As you can see, he's um, actually in as an NPC sort of model. That's because he isn't a leveled thing, basically. If it's leveled, it'll have this mark like this here. But if it's a flat NPC that's the same no matter what the player level they will look like the skeleton 
And now it's very simple. I've got to stop clicking on that. Very simple to link the two. We click on the skeleton. We click linked ref. We double click in the references box as usual. Select reference. Double click our warlock. As you can see, it says level warlock conjurer. Click OK. Click OK. And now the MP, the uh, the skeleton will follow the warlock along this three tiered path, which again brings a bit more realism. I say realism, but it makes it feel a bit more lived in and a bit more natural, and like you're actually disturbing the cave and their lives as opposed to just barging in and slaughtering things that happen to be waiting for you to kill them. The last thing to show you before we go try that out in game, as you can see, this marker here is green. This means it's a very easy marker. If we double click it, go to level actor as you can see level will pop up and we can go from easy medium hard to very hard and that will actually change the color of the marker now according to Bethesda and natural wisdom not on my part believe me um, you want about 50% of your enemies to be easy and then a spattering of mediums a couple of hards and then maybe one very hard per dungeon one hard the very hard will in all likelihood be kind of a boss type figure and in all likelihood you're going to want to put them down there at the end of your dungeon you don't want them at the start that would make any sense if you are building a particularly brutal dungeon you could stick very hard everywhere but i'm not going to recommend that we're going to call him a very easy you know it's the first enemy in the game makes sense for them to be easy just click ok and now all we do is save it if it's your active file, hitting Control S should save it, no problem. And now we're going to go in game, we're going to load Naxxus Tomb, and we're going to see if um, we have a patrolling conjurer. Cool, see you there guys. So here we are in Naxxus Tomb, and we are going to go ahead and open up our console. We use that with the ta tilde key, tilde key, whatever you want to call it. It's the key just below your escape key. Looks like a little wavy wave, basically. And we're going to type T detect. This basically turns off AI detection. This allows us to go and spy on our NPC. He should be just down here without them noticing us, without us interrupting their behavior. And there he is. There is our conjurer. Wanders to, this would be the second idle marker. There's the skeleton following behind. And unfortunately the skeleton's gotten away, so he's gone around him. But as you see, he's now worked to, walked to the next idle marker. And now, hopefully, he's going to walk over to the alchemy table and use that for three seconds or so. It's very exciting. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Now, I don't know why they keep doing that, but as you see, he is using the alchemy table. Only for three seconds. You might want to set that as a longer time. But it's that simple, guys. You can set up these patrols all along your dungeon. You can set the enemy levels. Um, in the future, we'll deal with more advanced things like having Draugr pop out of coffins and, you know, quite detailed AI, but that that's dealing with scripting and other things more so than just pathing. The point is, we can now make our dungeon feel a bit lived in, a bit more realistic, and uh, the enemies aren't quite so boring, waiting to die. And look, 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 we have a barrel of buckets again. Fantastic. I hope this has been helpful. In the next video, we are going to handle lighting. I don't know why there's this weird effect in the middle of my screen. We're going to handle lighting. So as you can see, these candles here aren't really making any impact. There's a bit of light coming off them, but they're not impacting the environment at all. There's no shadow, there's no real lighting source, so we're going to make this all a lot more dramatic. That's what's coming in the next video. Hope to see you there. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Um, the next video may be out tomorrow, but in all likelihood, I apologise, it will probably be Monday, because I simply don't have time at the moment. I've got a busy weekend. But, uh, you don't care about that. But uh, there will be some content of some form, and I promise within the next couple of days, we'll have episode 11 of the Creation Kit tutorial series. Thanks for watching, as always guys, and I'll see you then.